Welcome to Electron Online and to give you a better idea, a better understanding of what absorbing Markov chains are, I wanted to give you kind of a, an overview of the language that goes along with the matrices and with all the various elements within matrices and so forth and something you'll probably see in a textbook when you come across it. So again, it all comes down to having some uh, distribution of populations, maybe some stores, customers going back and forth between the stores, but you can see that once a customer goes to A, the customer will never go back to B or C, and since customers will go back and forth between B and C, and between B and A, and between C and A, then we can see that eventually all the customers will end up at A, and none of the customers will end up at B and C. So the transition matrix representing this will have a peculiar characteristics which, will, which we will identify in just a moment, which then indicates that this indeed is a what we call a transition matrix belonging to a, an absorbing Markov chain. So getting back to the language, this here is what we call a transition matrix. It contains the probabilities of how the populations will shift back and forth between what we call the states. So the letters up here represent states. In this case, it could be A, B, and C, so the number of stores or the population distributions, different countries, different states, whatever it may be. These are the from states and the to states, and the P's in here indicate the probability that a certain percentage of the population from, from this state will go to a different state. P is also sometimes called the matrix of transition probabilities. I sometimes call it the probability matrix because it contains the probabilities of the shifting of the populations. Notice that they have elements. They have two subscripted elements. The first subscript, uh, one in this case, represents the state you're coming from. Oh, I'm, I'll take that back. Uh, the first subscript indicates the state you're going to. The second subscript indicates the state you're coming from. That's a little bit confusing. It seems to be a little bit backwards. So notice the second number here indicates you're coming from state one. The first number here indicates you're going to state two. So Pij indicates the probability that the population will move from the j state to the i state. So from the second number to the first number. That makes it a little bit confusing, but again, that's what it means. Also notice, if PII is equal to 1, so if I and J are the same number and is equal to 1, then the population will not change, which would indicate that all the other elements in that column will then be 0. A mathematical way of describing that is if PIJ equals 1 with I equals J, so if it's the same number and that equals 1, and all of the probabilities in the column equals 0, in other words, the PI equals 1 minus N, uh, oh, I should say not minus, but from 1 to n. Put a little arrow there to indicate you're going from 1 to n. j remaining the same. If that's equal to 0 with i not equal j, then we have an absorbing Markov chain. So here, if we have an example where we have this element right here equal to 1, notice this is the P22 element. That's this element right here in the 3 by 3 matrix. And all the other elements in the column are equal to 0. If you have a case like that, then this is most likely an absorbing Markov chain. In this case, most definitely an absorbing Markov chain. So this is mathematically describing the definition of a, of a what we call absorbing Markov chain, but it's easy to see this is what it means when it comes down to the transition matrix, and this is what it represents graphically. It's a lot easier to look at these two and say, oh, I can see that must be a, an absorbing Markov chain. When you look at the verbiage of the definition in mathematics, it becomes a little bit more complicated to, uh, to understand. But at least that's what mathematics is for, to be able to describe it in that language. But as long as we understand what they say, we're in good shape. So now we'll go ahead and we'll show some examples of how to actually use it and calculate these Markov chains and how to find the transition matrix and how to find the stable matrix eventually that you end up with when you have an absorbing Markov chain.